Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this week's video. In this week's video, I'm going to build on top of the previous video where I added the crosser to UE5 and just added a little line trace. Uh, what I've done is essentially when we hit something with the line trace, we get this little outline behind the character. Um, it's also blocking my uh, movement and my mouse movement until I press Q again just to release it. Um, the idea behind this is if you've ever played uh, Fallout, I just thought... Why don't I try and have a go at making the Levat system? Um, in this video, I'm only going to cover the outline. Um, it's pretty simple. A lot of it's based off of material, which, because um, materials are not my sort of um, area of expertise, if, if I have an area of expertise. But anyway, um, because I don't have that much experience with, with materials, um, I'm going to point you in the direction of another person's video um, for that. He has a link down below where you can copy his code if you just want to do that. I don't recommend that. So it's always worth watching the video because he explains it and he explains which bits are doing what uh, far better than I'd be able to do. So I'm not going to tech. Um, I'm not going to try and do that anyway. So um, if you've never played Fallout, essentially VATS is like a targeting system. Um, what it does is when, when you enter VATS, it slows the game right down. What I've done is I've took it as it, it pauses the game, gives you a chance to, to sort of pick what you want to do. Um, now, in the older version of VATS, it actually highlights each area of the body that you've selected. So here you can pick the legs or the head or whatever. Uh, and then it'll this number dictates what percentage of a chance you've got of hitting that. So it's like an accuracy number. Um, I'm going to get into that, but I'm just going to go for the outline. Now, in the more modern Fallout 76, um, what it actually does is it highlights the entire character. And that's what I've gone for. Just a bit more simplistic. I, I might go down to the uh, sort of... Um, breaking down the parts into sort of highlighted pieces. Um, I'm going to see how it goes, but for, for now we're just going to stick to the highlighted bit. Um, so yeah, I, as I showed you, we uh, select our character and it highlights it. We're just going to cover that today, uh, and that's that. So let's get into it. Okay, so a couple of things that you need to do is you need to go to uh, Edit and go to your Project Settings. Uh, you actually need to set up something called Stencil in your post-processing um, rendering settings so with your project settings open go down uh, the menu uh, it's under engine uh, and you want to look for rendering and then you want to scroll down until you see the subheading of pros, pro, post processing so here we go post processing and then under custom depth stencil pass you want to change this from enabled which is the default to enabled with stencil Okay, so if you haven't already, you need to create this material. Um, going forward, this is not going to work without this material. Um, so pause the video now, watch the video down below, learn how he does it, create it yourself, get it working, um, and then we'll come back and we'll create the blueprint. Alternatively, which uh, you know I advise against this, uh, click my link down below um, and just create a new material create a new material um, call it outline open that up set the material from surface to post process and then click on my link copy the code hit paste in here and you'll get um, essentially all that happens is I've copied that you'll get um, let me open notepad you'll copy it and you'll just have a list of gibberish like that you'll you'll come into your new material press paste paste um, you'll get all this just move it over and plug it into the emissive color and you'll have the exact same um, post-processing material as I did hit save wait for that to save I'm not too sure but I think I've got Unreal 5 actually stored on a hard drive rather than my SSD, which is a bit daft, but anyway. So now you've got your outline material, you need to make sure you've got your post processing volume selected and go to your post process materials, add one to the array, and make sure you pick your outline material that you've just created, and then you'll be good to follow along. Okay, so now you've covered that material and that is created, you've got your outline material that we've just made. Uh, what we're going to do is open up the first person character and if you follow along with the previous video you'll probably have um, this 
Q button line trace, which just fires a line trace to the center of the screen. Uh, and this is what we're going to use to, to carry on with this. Right, so I'm going to just minimize the line trace options and I'm also going to minimize the line trace, uh, sorry, the break hit results uh, menu because we don't need all that. Um, right, so what we're going to do is the actor that we hit, we're going to try and we're going to cast to the character of that. Um, the reason we're going to cast to a character is if we cast directly to the, uh, what's it called? It's third person character female is it, it will only apply if we hit this model. If we then have a third person character male rather than female, it won't work. So we're going to actually take the hit actor and we're going to cast to a character because essentially anything that is based upon a character model. So my first person is a character uh, before it's a first person character. Um, so anything that's based on a character model will work with this. If you're going to use something like monsters or something that's not based on um, a character, um, uh, sorry, parent class, you need to really try and find sort of like a class which is shared between them all um, to, to cast two and then you can break it down. Anyway, so as a character, um, a character will always have a mesh. Um, so what we want to do is we want to tap into that mesh. So under variables, it's uh, get mesh. And that'll, that'll tap into the character that we've hit and then find the mesh. So let's plug that in to here. I'm going to leave my debugging string here just to get the character's name that we've hit. Um, just because I like to see that. I'm going to double click this blue line to add a reroute node in just to make it look a bit nicer. And I'm going to drag that mesh to about here. Uh, and you'll see why I've just floated that in the middle. Um, one thing I want to do just before we continue is if we hit something that is not a character, um, there's a chance that this is going to fail, um, which it, it would say cast failed, but um, as, as if some things are a character but don't have met. It, I'm just adding in a layer of protection. Um, I'm going to add in a, an is valid because there are there is a, a sometimes case where this becomes not valid, um, even though it it, it succeeds. Um, so we're just going to plug in an is valid here because we don't want to continue through this uh, blueprint if if that's not valid because it throws an error out. So if the mesh is valid. As I showed you earlier, what you want to do is under your mesh, you want to tick um, the render custom depth and you want to set this uh, custom depth stencil to two. Uh, this this value two is determined by the number that you set here in your custom stencil value in your material. So if you set this to six, you want to set um, this number to six. I've set mine to two, so I'm going to use two. So we want random render the custom depth and we want custom depth stencil number or value, sorry. Um, so from the mesh, we want to uh, render custom depth. So we want to set the render custom depth to true. So we tick that. So if that's valid, let's tick that box. And also from the mesh, we want to set the stencil value. So let's, whoop, let's connect that to there. And then again, just double clicking on the blue line, add a reroute node, make it look a bit nicer. And then what you can do, you can right click on this uh, mesh node here and say straight in connection to your reroute node and it'll make it a nice straight line. Uh, and then anyway, let's set that stencil value to two. So now this will work. This this will work straight away. Uh, let's compile and let's hit play. So without the gun, we're just going to run over, we're going to hit Q, boom. Because that material and the post-processing volume has been set up, now we've hit this uh, character, we're setting that uh, render uh, custom depth, and we're setting that stencil value to 2, which is basically telling the post-processing system, apply an outline to this, this, uh, this model. Okay, so what we need to do now is... 
if you're going to follow along for sort of like that system what i'm going to do is i'm just going to sort of like stop my character from moving because I, I eventually i'm going to bring up a sort of ui um to say uh, which which part of the body do you want to hit so for you to do this it's going to be get uh player hang on i'm not typing what's going on close that uh, get uh, player controller uh, this is going to get my controller um, and we're just going to sort of tell it to ignore my input so you can do that with uh, set ignore and we can set the ignore look input and the move input so if we tick this box we're saying ignore the look input so that's going to be from our mouse and again if we pull off this we're going to set ignore move input and we tick that and then the keyboard's not going to um is not going to be well, it's going to be ignored the information is going to be ignored so if now we compile and play uh we're going to come over here we're going to hit q and then now we're frozen we, we we can't move the game's still running you know you can set up a time dilation uh, and stop time whatever uh, but for now i've just i've frozen my character we can't move um and that's that so really now all we need to do is set up the opposite um to sort of turn it off and, and, and start moving again so what i'm going to do is right at the beginning from the cue being pressed i'm going to add in what's called a flip-flop now a flip-flop when i press q it's going to go to a and then when I press Q again, it's going to go to B. And then I press a a Q one more time, it'll go back to A. So it's sort of like a, a, an on and off switch, um, in a sense. So from B, I'm going to come all the way down here. And I'm going to do another is valid. Valid to start with. And that's going to be from the character. And I'm just going to add in a reroute node, maybe here and maybe here, just to make it look nicer. That's nice and straight. Yep. Make that look a bit nicer. And then we're going to literally just copy everything from above. So I'm just going to highlight all of that. Press Control and D in Unreal 5 and Control and W if you're in UE4. And with that all selected, I'm just going to drag that is valid to here. I'm going to untick these boxes and I'm going to set this stencil value to zero. Oh, zero. And then that, all that's left now is we need to link these up. So from the mesh, we go to the set render custom depth. From this reroute node, we can set the custom stencil depth. Because we uh, copied the reroute node as well, we're just going to delete that because we don't need that extra one and these are already hooked up so that's absolutely fine so alternatively you could plug these into here like that um and get rid of this that makes absolutely no difference um i think that looks a little bit neater so i'm probably going to keep it like that so now i'm just going to give it a quick test i'm going to press play i'm going to come over press q everything works fine i can't move i can't look I hit q again and then we're back to normal so now this is ready to build on, um, sort of add some firing system, um, select the target type thing. Um, I'll get around to that eventually. I don't know if I'm just going to, I'm probably not going to put these videos back to back. Um, this is just a little side project that I'm just working towards. Why not? Um, this is very much something that I do. I just prototype little bits and pieces in now and then. But if this was of any use to you, please consider giving me a like comment if it's missing something out or even comment just to let me know you liked it um i typically always get back to people's comments so if you do comment i will get back to you eventually um if you need some help or if, if you want to throw an idea towards me get it all in the comments alternatively there are some social media links down below you can join my discord server um i'm typically always active ish um because i have discord on my phone so I'll, I'll typically always see it i might not reply immediately but um i will get back to you eventually um yeah and that's it if you like what you've seen consider subscribing because i post every sunday um there's always something it's always mixed up um eventually there'll be something that is suitable for you um if i've not already posted stuff 
Anyway, I'm rabbiting on at this point, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much.